There are so many species of animals out there already, but they're getting a bit boring, aren't they? Why not combine some and get double the bang for your buck? These crazy combo hybrid creatures are all the rage, apparently, and we humans seem to be creepily interested in making more of them. From the snazzily dressed Zorse to the climate controlled Growler Bear, here are 20 of the rarest crossbreed animals in the world. Number 20 The Jag Lion. So here we have a crossbreed of a specifically male jaguar and a female lion, again with the exotic crossbreeding for zoo attractions. The jag lions, also sometimes known as the jaguan, when things are extremely rare. Names often haven't been decided on properly yet. Both the jaguar and the lion share quite a lot of genetic material already, and they both actually have spots. These are dominant anyway, so would definitely be passed on in any offspring. But unlike other lion crossbreeds, the males will not grow a mane. They grow to an average size somewhere between the two big cat species, with a lion being an average of 260 pounds and a jaguar around 200 pounds. Their offspring would likely as not fall somewhere in the middle. However, there are so few of these animals that have ever been observed that there's very little information upon which to base our understanding of this crossbreed. In fact, they're so rare that there are currently only two two of this kind of animal on record anywhere, and they both reside at an animal sanctuary in Canada, where they were born after a little accident. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. This one's a little on the X-rated side of things. So if you're of the nervous or easily offended disposition, well, consider yourself warned. Nobody really needs to see this now, do they? Unless, of course, this kind of animal porn is what you happen to be into. <laughs> no judgment here. It takes all sorts after all. Anyway, here we have a donkey on the receiving end of some schlong-necked action. This rather awkward and clumsy looking special cuddle is, allegedly, the work of some mad scientist with a harebrained scheme to create a giraffe donkey hybrid if you believe that sort of thing. So what would that be? A garonky? Well, would it have the giraffe's length or the donkey's gloomy disposition? What do you think would happen as a result of the adult wrestling between these two species? And should we even be looking? As always, let me know your ideas in the comments below using the hashtag fancy topic, and let's see what we come up with together. And now, let's keep on with the job in hand. Number 19. Green Gill Sunfish well, this fish may be a rare crossbreed, but frankly it's not as exciting as a big cat hybrid. The somewhat understated result of the interbreeding between two types of sunfish, the bluegill and the green varieties to be precise, is not the most exciting fish in the pond. They can have varying coloration, but in general these hybrid sunfish have a background color of blue and a foreground coloration of dark green. They can grow to be around 12 inches long when developed in aquaculture, although in the wild they tend to be much smaller at about 5 inches in length. Though these hybrid fish do breed and exist in the wild, they're generally kept as game fish or as pets in ponds and lakes. Well, as thrilling as that all was, shall we move on to something a little more exotic in the roller coaster world of hybrid animals? How about a bit of weird human tinkering to produce a new species? Number 18 Zonky. Apparently there's a bit of a trend for mixing things up in zoos in China, and zebras, well they seem to be getting a whole lot of action in the process. 
What I'm talking about here is obviously the combination of a donkey and a zebra, but again, it matters which one puts what where. A zonkey is specifically the offspring of a male zebra and a female donkey. When the father is a donkey and the mother is a zebra, their babies are known as donkras or zadonks, but frankly that just sounds silly. One such donkra was born at a zoo in China and it wore a donkey-esque brown coat on its body, but the snazziest of stripy zebra-style legs down below. Quite the looker. and no doubt another draw for tourism to that particular zoo. But is breeding for novelty purposes to get more zoo visitors an ethical thing to do? It's a slippery slope, but then you might start thinking about breeding in general or even the ethics of the existence of zoos to begin with. Yikes. Number 17, the Zorse. Oh, honey, look at those beautiful Zorses, said nobody ever. And this basically is how it goes for most of these animals that you've never heard of. You're not alone. Nobody has heard of them. So what in the world is a Zorse when it's at home? Well, that's right, Columbo. Well deduced. This is in fact a cross between a zebra and a horse, the result of which is, well, a stripy horse. The Zorse is what happens in the equine world when a daddy zebra and a mummy horse love each other so very much that they do a special cuddle and that puts a baby in the mummy's tummy. And then they have a baby Zorse. Actually, that Zorse is very horse-like to look at, but with the addition of a snazzy striped outfit, they often have a large head, long muzzle, and pretty eyelashes that stop stuff from getting into their eyes. They also usually have long, thin, but muscular legs that are able to produce a fierce zebra-esque kick. The sorts of clout and pattern and even size variation of Zorses can vary enormously depending on their parents, on what type of breed their horse parent is, and a whole host of other genetic stuff that has an impact on these animals. It's not an exact science after all. Ultimately though, there are few positives for the Zorse itself, apart from the obvious fashion icon status, of course. These animals often have a certain amount of disease and pest resistance, and that's bestowed upon them by their sturdy zebra genes. So it's not only about the stripes. Number 16, Mules and Hennies. These relatively common hybrid animals are probably amongst the least glamorous of those that we've seen on this list so far. They've got none of the sexy outfits that some of the big cat crossbreeds seem to be wearing. They don't gain any kind of superpowers or future-proof genetics. They're just a bog-standard cross between a donkey and a horse. And there have been mules since time immemorial. Right, a mule is technically the offspring of a male donkey and a female horse. A henny, well, that's the result of a horse stallion mating with a female donkey. Mmm, oh my. And there are some benefits to this kind of interspecies breeding business for these particular animals. Mules, and the more rare henny, often have robust immune systems and pretty good general health. They're strong, much stronger than the equivalent sized donkey or horse, but we all know what they say about mules, right? And it's true, these animals have some personality problems, stubbornness being just the tip of the iceberg. But then perhaps you would be a little peeved if, like a mule, you had the head of a donkey and the body of a mighty horse. Number 15, Blood Parrot Cichlid Fish. Now, sometimes the incessant prodding and poking around in the genetic makeup of various animals can actually do them harm. This is the general issue with all of this crossbreeding for aesthetic purposes. The blood parrot cichlid fish is one such creature which has developed a bunch of problems as a result of being engineered to within an inch of its life. So, the blood parrot cichlid is an aquarium fish hybrid species that was created by crossing a couple of different cichlid species, but in the style of a Frankenstein's monster. And something went wrong. 
This fish is the source of a whole load of controversy, even amongst the fish fanciers of the aquarium keeping world. Apparently, the particular genetic juice that this fish has wound up with leaves it with such a tiny little mouth that it can't actually eat properly. Which, in case it's not obvious, is a fairly sizable problem for any creature that needs to take in food in order to grow and produce energy. So this fish simply cannot thrive as it should, which sucks, frankly. It's such a controversial little fishy that some aquarium enthusiasts even boycott the pet shops that sell it. But despite this, there are always those with a different opinion who are unperturbed by such trifles as an inability to thrive and, you know, like the beaky head and big-eyed appearance of the hybrid fish. But what do you think about all this fishy business? Is it immoral to poke around in a fish's DNA? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 14. The Liger as pretty much Napoleon Dynamite's favorite animal, and perhaps the most well-known of the bizarre hybrid animals on our list, the Liger is, of course, a combination of a lion and a tiger, and this makes it the largest of all the big cats. It's known to grow up to a whopping 12 feet. In order for an animal to be considered a liger, it needs to be the specific creation of a male lion and a female tiger. The other way around would produce a tigon, apparently, so don't worry, there's more about those later in the list. These animals usually get to be much bigger than either of their parents, and they share a bunch of different characteristics from each of them as well. However, in general, they're more like a lion than a tiger overall. Male ligers will have a mane, but it'll usually be shorter than a lion's, and generally, ligers have tawny coloring like a lion, but with the addition of faint tiger stripes. And when they roar, they sound a lot like a lion as well. Although people seem to have a bit of a fixation on this hybrid animal, they would not occur naturally in the wild, since lions and tigers don't share the same habitats, so they wouldn't come into contact. And I'm sorry to break this to you, but contact? Well, that's kind of a necessary, even if icky, feature of baby making. So it turns out that the people have had rather inappropriate amounts of involvement in the love lives of these two animals. Ligers only exist in captivity, the result of an accidental or sometimes even deliberate tinkering by those pesky matchmaking humans. Number 13. Wolfen. Now, what could this one be? Oh, let me think about it for a moment, Walfen, Walfen. Oh, that's right, you guessed it. It's a special combination of the bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale that makes a Walfen. Although that's not the official moniker for the hybrid creature, they actually have a scientific name, which is much less fun, Stenobredanensis. That's not so catchy now, is it? Oh, and of course, all you science nerds out there will know that a false killer whale's not actually a whale, but a kind of dolphin that lives in warm and tropical waters. You know, the same places as the bottlenose dolphin. So perhaps it's not all that surprising that these animals have found love across the barriers of specific species. However, despite there being alleged wild wolfen sightings, there has never been any actual proof offered up to support those claims. So as far as science is concerned, the only examples of these animals are to be found in captivity. The few that do exist have such exciting features as being extremely fast growing, much faster than a regular dolphin, and then when they've achieved their full size, these hybrid creatures can be between 12 and 22 feet long and weigh as heavy as 600 pounds. Interestingly, the wolfen often falls into the average of each of their parents for many of their features. They have 60 six teeth. That's halfway between their parents, 88 and 44 each. In appearance, they have a blended coloring which is basically somewhere exactly between the light gray of the bottlenose and the black of the false killer whale. Number 12. Leopun. Up next for your eyeballs, I have a combination of a leopard and a lion crossbreeding resulting in the catchily titled Leopun. Like the other big cat crossbreeds that we've seen so far, it also matters which way around the parents are. And not just like that. I mean, come on. 
Get your mind out of the gutter already. A female lion must be mated with a male leopard in order to produce the leopin. Honestly, that name isn't really improving with use. But despite the titular issues, this animal is pretty spectacular to look at. It features the head of a lion, and the males have that big shaggy mane, along with the spotty body of the leopard. You have to see it to actually believe it. The other kooky thing about these hybrid animals is that as well as the obvious physical characteristics that the Leopin inherits from its parents, very often they seem to also be a perfect combination of both species behavior traits too. Leopins have the leopard's ability to climb and to swim, as well as the lion's sociable nature. Although Leopins have been bred in captivity, they are, again, very unlikely to occur in the wild. Although lions and leopards do share the same habitat, they're rivals for the same prey, and as such are more more likely to fight each other rather than to get it on. Number 11. Koi Wolf Oh dear, it seems as though coyotes and wolves have been meeting up for secret trysts in the wild, and some of them may have missed the class on how to avoid making a baby. The results? An interspecies love affair that's been popping up all over the place in Canada. Dubbed the Koi Wolf, Oh, so original. How long did it take them to come up with that one? This animal's becoming more commonplace in urban areas. And it is time that people paid attention, at least a little bit anyway. It sucks to be livestock with these creatures around. Not only are coyotes likely to cause a bit of a rumpus down on the farm, so too do wolves, and they're able to hunt together in a bigger, more organized way. Those are the characteristics that the koi wolf seems to have really run with in the development of its personality too. These animals are stone-cold killers, and they've just doubled up on their murderous skill set. Number 10. The Kama now, it must be tough being the only comma in the village, let alone the only one on planet Earth, but that's just how it was for Rama the comma. <laughs> she was the only known hybrid llama camel and had been that way for years before a few more of her kind came along to keep her company at the Camel Reproduction Center in Dubai. Whether it's morally questionable to begin tinkering with and mixing breeds of animals entirely for human purposes remains to be addressed. It is certainly something that people have been doing for centuries with breeds of horses and cattle, along with dogs and the such. So creating a camel llama to have all the most useful characteristics of each species is really not so different then, is it? What do you think? The kama, well, it's bred from a male camel and a female llama. Apparently it simply doesn't work the other way around. The aim is to achieve the long coat of the llama and the strong desert-ready legs of the camel to be a happy medium with the rest of their features, although they're both famously spitters, so that doesn't quite sound so promising. Number 9. The Geep in an unusual turn of events, a sheep and a goat might successfully mate and create a super rare sheep goat hybrid, or the daftly named Geep. Seriously? You gotta be kidding. Despite these two species seeming very similar and often sharing the same domesticated habits, they're actually genetically incompatible most of the time. Goats have 60 chromosomes and sheep have 54, and this makes it tricky for these animals to produce any offspring that can make it beyond the embryonic stage because of the genetic problems that such incompatibility can bring about. So when a healthy hybrid baby is born, it's actually pretty rare. Back in 2014, one of these special combos was born on a farm in the Republic of Ireland. The little geep was such a novelty that the farmer called the television news station to document the remarkable moment. And it was a cute scene with the mama sheep taking care of her baby like she would a regular old sheep. The little geep did indeed have a different appearance to other lambs on the farm, and he could actually run faster too. That's the makings of a movie movie plot right there, surely. Number 8. Beefalo 
Now there are a couple of options for what this hybrid creature might be made from. A bee and a buffalo perhaps? Although that is what the name says, it seems insane. So it's probably not a massive flying buffalo with a stinger. No, no, boringly enough, it's a buffalo that's crossed with a cow. And so the name is on account of the combination of domestic cattle and buffalo being bred to produce mmm, tasty beef. That sucks for the sad old beefalo. Seems like it doesn't stand a chance, the poor creature. And there's something kind of perverse about naming an animal for the dinner that it's going to become. Or am I just being too sensitive about this? The general idea is that these animals have been developed from a heady mix of a female American bison and a domesticated bull. The result? is bison meat that's actually flavorful and lean, but the animal is more docile and less of a menace than a full-on bison would be. Apparently, the usual amount of bison in the recipe is 37.5%, and the remainder is that of a domestic cow. Just how this mathematical tinkering is achieved is anyone's guess, but I imagine it's less than dignified for all parties involved. If the combination of a species is 50% or more bison, then they're referred to as as Catalo, although I shouldn't imagine that they really care what they're being called because they've all had their feistiness bred right out of them. Number 7. Growler Bears as melting sea ice of the Arctic continues to shrink, the polar bear's territory, these previously very cold climate-dwelling creatures are going further afield in the hunt for food. At the same time, grizzly bears from Alaska and Canada are making their way further north as temperatures increase in their habitats. It's making for some unusual hookups. The growler bear, or the pizzly bear, as it is also known, is the result of some adult interaction between these two large bear species. In the past, they would not have come across each other, but times and climates are changing and the barriers between bears are tumbling down. Funnily enough, sometimes the natural world really does seem to be adapting before our very eyes. Growler bears are actually better suited for the environment as the climate continues to change. They're better able to live in warmer weather than the polar bear, and they don't rely on the disappearing sea ice for their ability to hunt since they don't require a specialty diet of blubber like polar bears do. Grizzly bears have a more varied diet which makes them more adaptable to changing conditions and seasons. And this is one of the characteristics that the hybrid growler has developed, which makes this animal a future-proofing crossbreed. These two species beginning to breed in the wild offers them both benefits for the survival of their offspring, even if it does mean that polar bears as a separate species may eventually cease to exist. Number 6. Tigon now here we are, as promised, at the Tigon. Yes, this is the other kind of crossbreed of a tiger and a lion, and this time it's what happens when a male tiger gets his end away with the female lion. Apparently it's much less common than the already rare liger, which is the opposite combo of parental units. So what do we know about these most unusual of animals? Well, these animals can display characteristics from both parents, much as we have seen in these other hybrid species. They can have spots from the lioness and stripes from the tiger, making for a bit of a snazzy combo, you would imagine. Tigons are not supersized like their liger brethren. However, they basically stay a relative size in keeping with their leonine heritage. Despite there being notions that this crossbreed suffers from being small, it's basically simply limited in size by the genes from its mother rather than being gigantic like a liger. There are currently a handful of tigons in captivity in the United States, and they can occasionally be seen in big cat centers and zoos. In general though, breeding these kind of animals is rather unethical. There are some zoos in China that are known to be deliberately undertaking this kind of crossbreeding, but it's pretty creepy really. These two species are highly unlikely to ever procreate together under normal circumstances. Tigons never occur in the wild on account of their different habitats and the fact that these guys simply don't date long distance. It's a tricky thing to achieve, and big cats just don't have the dedication that's required or the Wi-Fi connection. Number 5. Savannah Cat 
These large pet cats have a wild history. The Savannah cat is a breed which has been developed from a domestic cat crossed with a serval, a type of wild African cat. These animals are actually kind of illegal in some places, unless you have a special license to keep one. They're also not supposed to be allowed to roam unsupervised outside. Their owners are required to put the cat on a leash and take it for walks just like a dog. How demoralizing for the cat. That's probably an extremely frustrating and unpleasant experience for those animals, as they're instinctive hunters with some wild cat characteristics. These cats are tall and slim and appear larger, although they are not very heavy. The actual size of savannas can vary enormously, depending on how many generations removed the animal is from the serval. And so, the largest tend to be first-generation males, and these cats often retain many of the wild cat's traits, too. Savannas really do look the part. They usually have beautiful markings and share some similarities in appearance to other wild cats, even some cheetah-like features. These cats are known for their long-legged agility and can jump from a standing position as high as 8 feet. They can climb and open cupboards, doors, and find themselves in all sorts of unusual situations, which includes water, as these cats have no fear or dislike of being wet, unlike most others. That is truly wild. Number 4. Zo. The word zo is a Tibetan word for the male animal that's produced when domestic cattle mate with a yak. Female offspring are called zomo. These animals are extremely commonly kept in the mountainous regions of Tibet, where there are big herds of yak and other hybrid animals. The zoo basically has some of the general features of a regular cow, but with the addition of the shaggy coat and horns that are the yak's most defining features. This warm outfit is no doubt a benefit to these animals in the chilly mountains, so it makes sense that this animal seems to thrive in these conditions. Living at high altitudes can take its toll on the flimsier bodies of ordinary cattle, so the yak, which is native to the Himalayas, passes on its abilities to live at such elevations in the thin air and tricky terrain. Zo are better adapted than either individual species to not only manage in these conditions, but to actually thrive. Zo much better than a hairy old yak. Number 3. Zubron the Zubron's basically like a Polish version of the American Beefalo that we met earlier on in our whistle-stop tour of the weird and wonderful crossbreeds. This hybrid animal was developed way back in 1847, but was not really considered much of a game-changer until after the First World War, when the Zubron was being seriously considered as a replacement for domestic cattle. The Zubron is a mix of the European bison and domestic cattle. So this wonder creature was discovered to be much hardier of an animal than either of its forebearers, being more resistant to disease and tougher than domestic cattle because of its bison bits, and likewise a tastier meat maker on account of its cow credentials. The seemingly perfect blend, so experimentation went on into the 20th century, seeking the best combination for the optimum cow-bison business, but there were a whole load of tricky hurdles in general Soviet-era difficulties, and eventually the pursuit of the Zubron's zenith would be abandoned. Although rumors abound that a new breeding program may be underway in a secret location. Number 2. Iron Age Pig now, you may be wondering what the motivations are for the resurrection of a pig that lived around 10,000 BC, and frankly, the mind just boggles. But there are a bunch of British farmers who decided this was something that was what got them going, and they set about tinkering with a contemporary pig and a wild boar in order to construct the approximation of an Iron Age pig. They used a Tamworth pig, which is a rare breed that has its roots back in Ireland, and a European wild boar. The general idea here is that the resulting porker looks a bit like these Iron Age pigs. 
They were believed to have stripes, which the wild boar does, when it's young at least, and they can be quite aggressive. Although you can imagine that all the mating with domestic pigs and whatnot might make them the tiniest bit cross. The purpose of all this pig gene tickling is to elicit a tasty meat, of course. Why else would you do it? Although the resulting pig is only a close enough version of the Iron Age pig, on account of this specific creature being very conspicuously extinct, it could be claimed that the hybrid is a kind of piggy in the middle compromise. Number 1. Africanized Killer Bees Sometimes accidents happen. It just can't be helped. But sometimes those accidents result in a murderous clan of killer bees breeding themselves into existence and then escaping from captivity to menace an entire continent. So you know some accidents are bigger than others. The Africanized killer bee is a kind of honey bee that's resulted from the mating of bees from South Africa with the Brazilian honey bees back in the 1950s. This was a bit of an accident, and the bee babies that they made somehow managed to escape from the quarantine environment in which they were conceived, and they went on a rampage across the whole of the Americas. Swarms of the very hostile and aggressive new bees spread throughout the Central and South Americas until eventually making their way to California in the 1980s and then on into Texas, Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico. They're famously angry and are known to chase people if they get overexcited, so don't go poking your nose around in their hives. There's no need to test out how they got their title as killer bees, now is there. And there you have it, a combination of surprises and accidents along with a handful of human interventions that have created some of our planet's more unusual animals. What do you think of the way people have been poking about in the business of crossbreeding? Let me know all about your thoughts in the comments below. Also be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.